Hello, class three and class four. Well, reading lesson for today with me again. Right, let's carry on reading the twits. So today we are going to be reading the chapters Dirty Beards and Mrs. Twits. Right then, guys, so we're going to read the chapter Dirty Beards today. Um, what if you'd like to just pause me, read each page yourself before I read it to you, that's fine. If you prefer me just reading it, then sit back and enjoy. Dirty Beards As you know, an ordinary, unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it is not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in amongst the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will know that even if he opens his mouth very wide it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all the other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. You can see there in the diagram you've got a cornflake, tin sardine, stilton cheese, ugh. If you look closer still, hold your noses, ladies and gentlemen. If you peer deep into the moustachy bristles sticking out over the upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wide wipe of his hands. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese, or mouldy old cornflake, or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never went really hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble off. What I am trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you'll find out in a moment. Mrs Twit Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a fair hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that at any rate would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She'd had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason she carried a stick was so that she could hit things with it. Things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. Right, so I've got some questions for you to answer about what we've read. So number one, name four things you could see if you looked in Mr Twit's beard. Number two, what do you think made Mr Twit so horrid? Number three, what made Mrs Twit turn from pretty to ugly? 
Number four, what does Roald Dahl say you have to do in order to look lovely? And number five, from what you have read so far, do you think Roald Dahl likes Mr and Mrs Twit? So on the next slide here, I have put um, the questions with your sentence starters. If you'd like to use them, great. If you just want to discuss it with your parents or your siblings or anything, that is fine too, okay? But those sentence starters are there if you'd like them. So once you've had a go, come back to me and I will go through the answers. Okay, so hopefully you've all had a go at those. I'm going to go through the answers with you now. So, number one was name four things you could see if you looked in Mr. Twit's beard. If you have put any of the following, then you are correct. So, tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs, spinach, tomato ketchup, fish fingers, minced chicken livers, Dalton cheese, cornflakes or tin sardines. Number two, what do you think made Mr. Twit so horrid? Now, this was your opinion, but some ideas that you might have had was the fact that he never washed. Um, the author uses the word foul when he describes him. He doesn't care about himself. He doesn't take pride in his appearance. So maybe he doesn't care about others. So anything along those lines. But that is very much your opinion. Number three. What made Mrs. Twit turn from pretty to ugly? So she turned from pretty to ugly because she had ugly thoughts every day, every week and every year. Okay. And as we Roald Dahl said, if you've got ugly thoughts, then that comes through and you become ugly. So what does Roald Dahl say you have to do in order to look lovely? You have to have good, lovely thoughts. And they will shine through your face like sunshine or sunbeams, I think he says. And then finally, from what do you have read so far, do you think Roald Dahl likes Mr. and Mrs. Twit? What gives you this impression? So I put, I think that Roald Dahl does not like Mr. and Mrs. Twit. I get this impression because he calls them horrid. You might have put something out that he doesn't like them because he tells you that they're both mean and that comes through. They have horrible thoughts. Anything like that, guys, would have been great. If you are still a bit confused or you've got any questions about that, just send me an email and I'm more than happy to help. Okay? Bye! Good morning, class three and four. I hope you're okay and got on all right with your math yesterday. I'm just going to whiz through the uh, potential answers that you have from yesterday, um, and then we'll move on to today's learning. Um, you'll need your right angle checker if you made one yesterday. If not, go back to yesterday's video, watch how what how you can make one, and because you're going to need it today, um, it'll be really really helpful. Okay, right. So. Um, Yesterday, for your do-it challenge, I asked you to use your Pac-Man right angle finder, it's a mouthful, um, to find which shapes have right angles. And you could tell me how many right angles they have as well. So, um, you first shape here is a circle. Hopefully, you knew that a circle without even checking was not going to have any right angles because it doesn't have any straight lines. Now, we get a right angle by um, with two straight lines that meet at a 90 degree angle um, and it also represents a quarter turn. So, a circle does not have any straight lines, therefore, it cannot have any right angles. So, I'm not even going to check it. Um, you then have a triangle here. Um, so, if I, use, if I angle my Pac Man, so straight away I can see. Um, even if I put that straight line sort of in line with mine, uh, there's still a huge gap here. So the angle that's created here is much smaller than the angle created in my right angle here. Okay, um, and I know that's the same for each of those. So triangle does not have a right angle. Some do. Uh, a right angle triangle will have a right angle. Um, square we know does have a right angle, so that's one of the properties of squares. We know that it's got four equal uh, sides. It also has four right angles. That's how we can recognise a square. Okay, so a square does have a right angle. It has four. Um, we've then got our hexagon again here. We checked this earlier on, um, and we know that these angles are actually um, greater than a right angle. It doesn't quite fit. Um, you can see how it goes over. Okay, so that oopsie, uh, hexagon does not have right angles. And then we've got um, this diamond shape, which is the same as a square, just turned on its side. Okay, so that should fit beautifully. So out of those two shapes, it was just those two that had 
right angle and they both had four each. Now your challenge was then to see if you could find any right angles at home. Now I do all these filmings all on one day so you may have emailed me um, or Miss Foster with pictures of things that you found with right angles. You may not. It'd be wonderful if you have um, but don't worry if you haven't. Um, so you might have found things like um, a table, perhaps a cabinet or a cabinet door, a shelf, picture frames, doors, door frames, wardrobe, I'm just looking around my room now, window, windowsill, um, yeah, you will have hopefully found lots and lots and lots, but I just wanted you to have fun um, checking them with your right angle checker. Um, okay, so how many right angles then for your secure it? Now, there are, I think, 34 right angles, okay? Um, if I just make a little mark here so we've got one two three four in that shape there we have a roof here um, and it does have angles okay so it's got an angle there but that is not a right angle okay that's greater than a right angle and these two down here are smaller than a right angle but i've got one two three four then five six seven eight so that's eight there I'm drawing this with uh, my mouse. <laughs> and then I know that I'm going to have four on each of these. So that's going to be four. And I've got one, two, three, four, five windows. So that's 20. Plus another four there. So 24 um, plus my eight. So 24 add eight. That's 32. So also oh, I'm missing one somewhere, I think. Ah. Ah, the sneaky one here. 33. 34. Okay. Oh, that almost got me then. So, all you had to do then was count your right angles on your chimney, right angles on your big pink um, sort of rectangle here. Then you've got four right angles again on each of your windows. So, that's four times five, plus the ones inside the door. And then, if, like me, you nearly forgot that you. Uh, a right angle is created where this straight line meets this straight line. There's a right angle there and there, and an extra two there. So the answer is 34. So well done if, oh my goodness, you managed to find all of those. You didn't get tricked like me. Okay, so today then we're going to have a look at comparing angles. So there's your date. We're on the 2nd of June. Oh my goodness. And our LO is to compare angles. So pause it now whilst you write that down. Okay, so I've got three different angles here and I've got my angle finder as well. Okay, now I've just used this sort of uh, quarter of a circle one for my angle finder. You'll see that I've drawn these two lines here. Now when that's in with my um, angle there, with my right angle, that actually creates a square. Okay, so that's another way we talked about yesterday how you can recognise a right angle. But if you use those two straight lines that meet at the right angle, it can make a square. Okay, and also to remember, just to remind you, an angle, so our two straight lines meet and it's the space that's created within that. So the area between those two straight lines, that's what we call an angle. We can measure it. Um, we have some retractors, um, a type of tool that we can use to measure it. Um, but at the moment, we just have to focus on right angles, so these here, which is 90 degrees. If we were to measure that, it'd be a 90 degree angle. Um, but we also recognise that as a quarter turn, okay? Um, now, here I've got a right angle, okay? That fits perfectly. Um, the space in there is the exact same as the space I've got here, okay? It fits in perfectly so we know that up there is a right angle okay now i've got two angles down here and they are very different one is going to be greater than my right angle and one is going to be less than my right angle and they have special names that we're going to be using today so let's start with the this one okay so i'm just going to line that up there can you see it's on top now have a look at the space filled up by the angle that i'm measuring is that more or less than the space created in my right angle? It is less, okay? It's much less, it's almost less than half less, okay? So if a right, if an angle is smaller than the right angle, 
then that is called an acute angle okay now a nice way to remember that is if it's really small it might be really small and cute okay so year four i'm sure you guys remember that from last year okay so an acute angle is an angle that's smaller than a right angle okay so it's acute it's small um but it's acute one word not a cute angle um it's one word acute okay but little word detective it has the word cute in it that can help you remember that an acute angle is when it's smaller um, or less than a right angle okay now over here we've got another angle so let me just twist my whoopsie my right angle around so I can match it up to one of those lines like that when it fits in there we go okay so look at that space created by the angle that I'm measuring is that greater so is that covering my right angle and more or is it less Hopefully you can see that it is greater than my right angle because it's covering all of my right angle plus some more. Okay, so that is greater than. Now, angles that we call, that are greater than a right angle, they are called obtuse. Okay, now I'm sure someone in year four last year said, I think, it, yeah, it makes you think about an obstacle. Okay, so something that's big, it's, um, you've got to get over, it's, it's, it's bigger than everything else. So that's a nice way to remember obtuse is like an obstacle okay so it's greater than your right angle bigger than your right angle um but yeah so your obtuse is something that is greater than a right angle so we're looking at obtuse angles and acute angles today so we're going to be using that language to describe these angles that we are comparing okay so i've got here two different angles that are being shown on these clocks okay so have a little look here at the angle between the hands that have been created so if i just get my highlighter out so you can see what i'm talking about here so we've got a straight line there and a straight line there so we're going to just compare that angle there so that space that's created there and then down here between the two straight lines again there okay so we've got two angles that have been created there um, on those clocks with those um, hands okay the hour hands and the minute hands so the angle between the hands is mm, then a right angle so let's look at this first one here so see if you can do it without using the right angle checker first and then if you're not sure get your right angle checker out from yesterday and just hold it onto the screen and see if you can fit it in and work out is that smaller is it greater or smaller okay so then is it going to be called an obtuse angle or an acute angle so have a look first and then I'll test it with mine. So pause it now so you can test it with yours and then I'll show you mine. Okay, so I've got my right angle checker here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it round so that way. So it will line up with, um, oh my goodness me, the hour hand that's pointing at the 12. Okay, so when I put that over there, now don't get confused thinking that because I can only see um some of that there hello pads um that it's bigger than my right angle can you see where i colored in that bit of pink there that's showing it's actually smaller now i can't actually fit this right angle in which shows that it is too small now if i use my um pac-man right angle checker so um let me just very quickly create da -da -da -da, one like that So I'm just going to put those together. There we are. Right, so this is a right angle. And if I put that there, okay, you can now see that that angle there is a lot less than my right angle. Okay, so I put here the angle between the hands is smaller than a right angle. This is called what? What kind of angle? Is it an acute or obtuse? Remember, acute is something smaller than a right angle. And then down here at the bottom, the second one on the clock, I'm going to pop that down there. So the angle between the hands, is it greater or smaller than a right angle? So I'm going to put where my two lines meet exactly where theirs meet. Okay, so the angle that's created for here goes all the way down there. So that's way past 
um, a quarter, a quarter turn, so it's past a right angle, so it's greater than a right angle. So I'm going to change that to greater than a right angle. So what's that called? If a smaller angle, smaller than right angle is acute, what is greater? Obtuse. Okay, so those are the two important words that we're using today, acute and obtuse. Okay, so now I want to have a little go, have a little look at these. We've got different angles here, so we've got angle between those two hands again. We've got a kite there that has four different angles. And then we've got scissors here. Now we've got an angle here. You've got an angle on the top, angle on the bottom. And then here's difficult because they're not straight lines there. So you've got one, two, three angles there that you can compare. So remember, an angle can only be where two straight lines meet. So just have a little go with your angle checker now. You don't have to write anything down. I just want to see if you can work out um, any of the acute or obtuse angles okay so you can pause now um, and have a go at that and then press play so that i can go through it with you okay i'm just going to get this i'm going to pinch this because that was useful over here okay so first i'm just going to check this um clock i think it might be trying to trick you so oh, let me I think if I turn that slightly like this, I think that one is a right angle, okay? So that does not have an acute or obtuse angle there, okay? Now I'm going to check this kite. I think this is going to have a mixture from what I can see. Okay, so I'm going to line up my lines here to twist that around a little bit there we go okay so at the bottom there we've got an acute angle because it's smaller than my right angle and i'm going to check this top corner here like that i think it looks very close to a right angle doesn't it oh i think that might i might give you that i might say that's a right angle so I think the opposite will be the same. So I'm just going to check this top one now, which I think because it's opposite to um, the acute angle, I think that one might be obtuse. Yep, yeah, it is. So we've got an acute angle at the bottom of the kite and an obtuse angle at the top of the kite. And then over here on the scissors, um, we'll have this angle here at the top of the scissors that will be obtuse. And that opposite one there will be obtuse. And then this little one here will be acute. Okay, so well done if you've got those. Now, for today's do it, I would like you to use your right angle checker and I want you to see if you can find in your house three things that have an obtuse angle and three things that have an acute angle. So you're looking for three different things. You're looking, so you should hopefully find six things. So three obtuse angles and three acute mm -hmm. angles. And all you need to do is list those in your book. Okay, for an extra challenge, um, I've got here for you. Now, normally I would give you this on, you know, your piece of paper to stick in your book. Oh, move out the way, you little timer. There we go. Um, I'd normally ask, I'd give you this um, and I would just get you to sort of check all these different angles that have been created wherever these two lines have crossed or met um, and label the acute or obtuse. Um, however, not quite possible. So what I'd like you to do is have a go at drawing one yourself. So using a ruler, just draw. So this is made up of one, two, three, four lines. That's just four straight lines, that's all. This one kind of creates like an, a, a giant A and then it just has another one going across the bottom, okay? So have a go, just draw four straight lines using a ruler in your book that cross over. You can try and do it exactly like this one. We can do it slightly differently, it does not matter. Um, but I want you to have a go then at labeling all of those angles that you create and tell me whether they are acute or obtuse, okay? So for example, I'm gonna make this one really big so you can see it nice and clearly. Um, here, I know that that will be an acute, but I'm not going to be able to fit the word acute in there. So all I would do was put a capital A there, okay? And then here, I know that one is obtuse, so I put a capital O there for obtuse where that angle is, okay? So you can do that as well. Oh my goodness, what's going now? Okay, so that is your do it today, and there's an extra challenge there for you if you would like to do it. 
again I'd love to see the creations that you come up with um, drawing your lines and labeling those angles okay so pause it now whilst you have a go at that and then press play again to look at the secure it okay so feel secure it then um, Teddy describes a shape he says my shape has three right angles and two obtuse angles what could Jack's shape look like and then you can have a go at describing a shape in terms of its angles for a friend to draw. You could email it to a friend or you could do it on FaceTime to a friend or you could email it to me and I can have a go at it. Or to Miss Foster. So um, have a go at drawing it. So your shape has got to have three right angles and two obtuse angles. What might that look like? OK, so have a go at that. And I'm going to put your answers on at the end of this video today. So pause it now whilst you have a go. And then when you're ready for today's answers, um, press play. OK, then, guys, so for your answers for your do it, it, it it totally depends what you found in your house okay um things that have an obtuse angle i'm trying to think um oh i would definitely be looking in perhaps a cutlery drawer to see what i can find in there i think that would have some great things um looking at hooks perhaps if you've got any coat hooks anywhere in your house or in your kitchen or in your home anywhere um you might have um the way the hook sort of the uh, coat peg or hook sort of sticks up that might create an angle um if you've got a door handle like mine to your front door um mine sometimes sticks up and that will create an angle um that could be obtuse or acute depending which way you look at it and i'm trying to think of anything else you might have um looking around my room if you've got any wonky shelves like me that aren't completely in a right angle against the wall i can see i'm looking up at the one above me now um it's kind of coming away from the wall a little bit and that creates an acute angle where it meets the wall at the top but then at the bottom um also creates a bit of a an obtuse angle okay so that's totally dependent on how you've done but as if you've had a go i am more than happy um for your secure it from uh today then um, this was a possible answer okay that would have worked where you've got your two you, sorry three right angles so in the corners and at the top there and then you've got your two obtuse angles here one two there aren't any other angles in that shape so that would have been fine and then you could have had that um, that's still the same that's still the same and that's still the same okay so well done if you've got something similar to that but there are other possible ones so if you've got one different to that do send me a picture i'd love to see it um, well done for all of your hard work today guys um, and keep it up see you soon bye good morning class three and four um hope you're okay and got on with your writing yesterday um got miss Cunnington again for your writing today okay we're on tuesday the 2nd of june so pause now so you can write down the date and you'll have the lo in just a minute Okay, so let's just recap on our grammar grammar from yesterday. Let me just move this out of the way. So we've got the word unhelpful here. Our root word is help. Okay, and that um, holds the main meaning for the word. And then we've got the prefix un. So that means it's not there. And suffix full. So instead of being helpful, being full of help, somebody might be unhelpful. So they are not full of help. So, um, for today then, we were looking at the root word yesterday, we're now going to have a little look at the prefix and the suffix in each of these words. So write down these words in your book, and then can you please circle either the prefix or the suffix in each word? You might want to underline the root word to help you, but then circle the prefix or the suffix. Pause it now so you can do that in your book. Okay, so here are the answers. So for thoughtful, we have the suffix full. Okay, so full of thought. For the word interestingly, the suffix added there is li. You might have also put ing li because the, the root word there would be interest. Then it, could be, it becomes interesting and then the suffix ly has been added. Here we've got the word higher, okay, so something can go higher up or higher in the air. And the suffix is er, uh, higher, which shows us that it keeps on going. Up here we've got the word weightless, and the suffix is less. And 
then here we've got the word learner. Now the root word is learn, so our suffix is er. Uh. Okay, so none of these words had a prefix, they all had suffixes. So well done if you got those. Right, so your learning objective today is to use adjectives to effectively describe characters. So pause it now so that you can write that down and then press play again for your first task. Okay, so firstly, I would like you to listen to the descriptions of Mr. Twit and Mrs. Twit. As I read them to you, I'd like you to draw them as you see them in your imagination. So in your book, you can have a go at drawing them, it doesn't have to take up the entire page. But this will tell us how effective Roald Dahl is in bringing his characters to life. Okay, so get your pencil ready now. I'm going to read you this description and I'd like you to have a go at drawing these two characters. Okay. Mrs. Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that at any rate would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason she carried a stick was so that she could hit things with it Things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. Mr Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose, was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr Twit felt that his hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth he was neither of these things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was born a twit. And now at the age of 60 he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy-faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr, T Mr. Twit wash his bristly, nail brushy face of his? The answer is never, not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty beards. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. Ooh. Right, pause it now if you like, so you can just finish off drawing your characters there, Mr. and Mrs. Twit, face based on those descriptions. Hopefully that's created a brilliant picture in your head, in your imagination, from Roald Dahl's description. Now, these are the two illustrations by Quinton Blake. Now, how close are your drawings to his? So you can see here that Mr. Twit, he's got this, the hair in his beard, well, all we can see is his nose and his eyes. And we've got all this facial hair and it's a really long beard and all the hair, it says, it describes it as um, nail brush straight bristles. And then here we've got Mrs. Twit, who was described as being uh, terrifically ugly. And it would have been better if she did have a beard to hide her ugliness. You may have drawn her, um, the whole of her, um, and you may have drawn her with a walking stick. It talked about her having a walking stick, um, and that was to bat away small things like cats, dogs, and small children. So think about what that tells us about her personality as well as what she looks like. Okay, I'd like to think of as many adjectives and similes, I'll explain that again in a second, um, as you can to describe Mr. Twit or Mrs. Twit. Now, you'll use these to help you with your writing later on today. So, firstly, if I were you, just choose one of those, Mr. or Mrs. Twit, whichever one you'd rather. If you think there's one that you'd be able to describe better than the other, then choose that one. Um, now, we've said here to use adjectives. Remember, an adjective is a word that describes the noun. And a simile is a technique you can use to describe something by comparing it to something else. So over here, we've got um, spiky hair, which sticks out at funny angles, 
like a bird's nest. Okay, so a simile is when you compare something to something else that's similar to it. So you might use the word like a or as something as a something. So um, you might describe um, as, I'm trying to think of a, a simile using as. Um, mm -mm -mm. I can't think of one off the top of my head, um, but using like as your simile is really, really useful. Um, so just from this picture, I might think about um, describing Mr. Twit's nose, saying um, he had a pink round nose that, oh, I'm trying to think, ah, uh, a pink round snout like that of a pig um, would be similar because it looks a little bit like he's got a snout there, like a pig snout. Okay, so make a listening book, choose which one you'd like to describe, Mr. or Mrs. Twit, and make a list of adjectives. So here we've got scruffy, we've got rotund, um, disgusting, um, and we've got a simile there as well to help you. So make a list of those in your book now. So pause it if you like, and you don't have to do both of them. You can if you want to, but just one of them is fine. Just make a list. They don't have to be sentences, just a list of adjectives you could use to describe them. If you come up with a word... Um, Perhaps if you were to say the word ugly, try and challenge yourself. What could be a synonym for that? So a more effective word with a similar meaning or same meaning. OK, so for your task then today, I'd like you to write a character description of Mr. Twit or Mrs. Twit. It doesn't have to be both, just one of them is fine. I want you to have a go at describing their appearance, so what they look like, but also their personality, so how they behave. So think about what we know about these people in terms of how they eat, what they do, how they treat other people. Try to include precise adjectives, so adjectives that are really clear and describe them exactly. Perhaps you could use some exciting expanded noun phrases. So instead of saying, Mr. Twit was big, Mr. Twit had a long beard, Mr. Twit had food in his beard. Try and think about how you can bring that to life and create exciting expanded noun phrases with them. So using an adjective, adjective, noun with something. So Mr. Twit was a hideous tall man with a disgustingly long beard full of food. Okay, so bring your character to life. Just one of them, it doesn't have to be both, just one of them is fine. So use that list of adjectives and similes that you've created and see how you can put those into sentences to create a picture for your reader, okay? So good luck with that. And I would love to see the pictures that you guys came up with at the beginning. If you'd like to send a picture to me or Miss Foster, that would be amazing. Speak to you soon, guys. Bye.